Hi guys, um, I'm Jasmine Marillo, the director at Camp Bow Wow, Katie, Kima, and Cypress. And today I have Trace Menchaca with me, the owner of Modern Pet Foods out in the Houston area. Um, I'm super excited to have her with me. She um, has an amazing story about how her small business started and where it has progressed to. Um, and I actually use her services for my own dogs. We're both in a local um, networking uh, group together, BNI SciFair business chapter, um, and it's it's great. We love it. I get to see her every week. I probably visit her twice a month to make sure I have all my dogs special, you know, things that they need to stay happy and healthy. Um, so, Trace, tell me a little bit about yourself, your business, how you got started, um, and why you love it. Yeah, thank you. I agree with you. I love seeing you every week uh, via Zoom. Hopefully we'll be able to do it in person, but I also love to get to see you in person and um, love Camp Bow Wow. We're big fans of Camp Bow Wow and love referring our customers to you. Yeah, so we started a little 10 years ago and um, my daughter was in FFA. We wanted a one-stop shop for FFA kids. And so we really started more as a traditional feed store. Um, as a kind of delivery model for all those kids. We wanted them to have, you know, kind of everything being delivered to them at once. Um, and we started in December. So uh, it's a weird kind of like mid season for them. Yeah. So by March, all of our customers slaughtered their animals because unfortunately that's what happens at the end of an FFA season, right? Yeah. So we had to instantly, we had kind of like that, oh no moment and had to instantly pivot and think, well, what are we going to do now during the off season? And that's how we kind of started slinging dog food. And so we started delivering dog food in that off season. And that's kind of how the pet side of our business was born in those off seasons until finally, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward, we realized, um, especially right before the pandemic, great timing, that the business model really worked better more for pets than in the suburbs than farm and ranch. So we had a passion for farm and ranch, but our true expertise is in pet. And we knew that there is more profit in pet, more return on investment in pet and where we are location wise, a better business model for pet. So we transitioned our business to be a, a true, a true pet store rather than farm and ranch. We still have poultry for our backyard poultry people, but now we have a true, true pet store. And us pet parents, we're, we're a little crazy, a little extra sometimes. And oh, yeah. With our fur babies, for sure. And I just want to give a shout out to those FFA kids. I'm not from Texas. Uh, and let me tell you, those are my best employees. Like, I love all my employees, but my FFA kids, they come in, they work hard. Um, they're not afraid of anything. They're they're awesome. So kudos to your daughter. <laughs> I can't. Yes. And my, my employees are FFA kids too. And so if you need a bug killed in your store, um, that's your guide to do it. Uh, squash a bug, FFA person. Uh, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, FFA person. Yep. Well, and, you know, when the price of beef goes up, guys, you know, in those times, Go to your local FFA, you know, support those people for your beef and for your pork and for your chicken. Um, if, you know, if you are beef eaters and chicken eaters and pork eaters, that's the place to get your good deals on uh, those commodities, you know, come come spring, uh, support your local FFAs. Yeah, and supporting those kids, they work so hard, so hard. Oh, it's crazy, yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, so since you've transitioned from feed uh, to pets, um, Let's talk about some of the things that we are pushed or, you know, marketed to feed our dogs. Um, there's so many trends out there, grain-free, having your dogs be vegan. I know for me personally, I mean, I'm a mom of three kids and three dogs, and I it's hard enough for me to make sure that I'm eating what I'm supposed to be eating, and then the responsibility of keeping small two-legged kids alive, and now I'm throwing in my four-legged kids. Like, how do you feel about all of this? What would be your, you know, a recommendation to new pet parents? Where where should we start? It's so overwhelming um, when it comes to feeding them and making sure we're, we're feeding them the right and the good stuff. Hasn't it become crazy? Yes. You know, when, when you and I were growing up, we fed Alpo. We fed Come and Get It. We fed Gaines Burgers. Um, 
it really wasn't until 2008 when there was a melamine crisis in China in dog food and dogs started dying that people got really, really concerned about dog food. And really, some of these boutique brands started popping up, okay? And people got really concerned about the ingredients in dog food and what are we feeding our dogs. Then fast forward to today, and there are things in the news about should we feed grain-free, should we not feed grain-free, and it's very confusing, and studies come up, and, you know, will this hurt my dog, will this not hurt my dog? And really, at the end of the day, as a, as a canine nutritionist, I always am going to yield to the medical expertise of a vet, right? But for me, I look at, like, input-output. What am I putting into my dog? What's coming out of my dog, right? You know, it's all about poop. Uh, it, well, we had that conversation about poop. I was just I mean, there two weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I changed my dog's food and there's diarrhea on my floor. I know that's not working for my dog. If I change my dog's food and they're lethargic, that's not working for my dog. So then we make a vet trip and find out why, okay? But it's very simple. And, and the grain-free debate was a little premature. You know, that was a very small study about a very specific type of dog. And so grain-free diets are good for dogs that have a need for that your short-haired breeds, some of your Frenchies, some of your bully breeds that might be more allergic. But like my dogs eat grain, you know, th that helps keep their bowels firm and keeps their poop firm. And so I do feed my dogs food that has grain in it. Other dogs, grain-free is just fine for them. There's no reason to panic. Now, uh, the other big debate is kibble. You know, a lot of people think that kibble in general is bad or that certain brands, Purina, Pedigree, you know, different brands are bad. At the end of the day, you know, I think that once we get to heaven, God's going to tell us it's all just Alpo, right? And the, the thing is, we just want to build a better bowl from the bottom up. So you start with some kibble. The best you can afford is what we want to do here, right? And then you add some hydration. Maybe it's warm water to get that gravy train going, you know, from the old days. Or maybe it's some, some sodium-free bone broth from the grocery store or some broth from here. And just to add some hydration, if you want to get really, really cool, add a can at one feeding to help. You know, I always used to be that you didn't want to add cans to the food because People thought, oh, no, we don't want to add cans because once you add a can, they'll never eat their dry food again. Well, that's good. You want them to have hydration in the bowl. But I can take the worst kibble from Valero, and once you add a can, maybe some fresh fruits or veggies, some broth, it can turn that bowl into the best, the best bowl that you could pay a high amount of money for. And that's all we really want is to add things to the bowl and make it budget friendly, sustainable for our customers long term. Not get fancy with these new trends, not jump onto some of these trend trains that don't make sense for a canine, you know? Yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. I like you said, I grew up, I honestly don't even remember feeding what we fed my dogs as a kid, but as a young adult, I was buying store brand food. Um, and in yeah. my mind, store brand food wasn't being recalled. So while it was also, I could afford it, uh, I didn't have to worry at the time about my dogs becoming sick because it was, there was never anything in, you know, about Kroger or HEB brand or Walmart brand food being, having a huge recall, like some large name brands. And right. It's going to happen somewhere. Eventually there's always something being recalled. Um, but I was just in last week talking about Duchess poop. Um, you know, I currently buy the Costco Kirkland brand, either the salmon or the turkey. And my two dogs, like you mentioned, short haired. I have a lab who's short haired and a short haired dachshund. They love it. They do fine. They do great. Their poop looks normal. But when you and I were talking, I have Dutch who is like this shepherd mix. So while not long, long haired, it is he's longer haired than the other two. And I made note that his stool was not 
like, wow, that's a nice poop. Like <laughs> it could have been better. Right. And so we switched and I noticed a huge difference right away, not only with his stool, but his like excitement to eat it. Um, the yeah. other food, it was like, man, I guess I'll eat it. It's whatever. But this food, there was a huge like, oh, this stuff is good. So, you know, I think trying new things, making sure you're trying them appropriately, like mixing them together so that we can avoid yeah. that icky diarrhea um, is important. But but yeah, like poop is is a huge indicator for a lot of things with our furry kids. Yeah. And, you know, it's great that you mentioned the Costco brand because a lot of people feed that Kirkland brand and that is a really good dog food. People come in here and they feel kind of ashamed that they feed one of those big box brands like that and 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 think that we're instantly going to try to change them to one of our kibble brands. That's not the case at all. You know, especially even if your dog's getting tired of it. One of the things we can easily add to it is just can rotation, maybe just for one of the feedings. Let your dog graze all day, right? Mm -hmm. And then at night, let's say you have a side-by-side -side bowl feeder. Well, you can put the dry kibble on one side, the can on the other side. Or you can mix and then put some fruits and veggies on that side. Or get a cookie sheet, spread some kibble on it, make a, char a charcuterie board out of it or a barcuterie board out of your cookie sheet and just add some fun things to that Costco kibble and that's going to make it spread a long way so even if you're not using our kibble and that Kirkland's brand kibble is rated very highly yes. um then you know we still have lots of things that you can add to it to excite your dog about that kibble again because you know just like us we don't want to eat hamburger meat every day but if we add macaroni one day if we add spaghetti sauce one day different things you know, we, we're going to get excited about hamburger meat again. So yeah. that's exactly the same way we want to think about dog food and especially kibble. And, and yes, especially for Dutch, in a household with multiple dogs, one bag is not going to feed all sometimes. And it sucks because a lot of people want that. People want the one 50-pound bag for all the dogs. And it's hard to do that sometimes. So well, he's very special. Um, you know, what I really need is I, I want what I want are garbage dogs. Um, my other two dogs will eat anything. Tomatoes, yeah. you know, lettuce. Dutch is like, let me smell this. Oh, you're gonna feed me an apple. I guess I'll eat it because the other yeah. dogs are like I need dogs in my life that are gonna clean up after my three kids. Like be yeah. helpful. You know, you're not you can't live here yeah. rent free. Dutch Dutch definitely <laughs> lives in my home rent free with his special dietary, you know, he's a meat and cheese potato man for sure. So the, the food you recommended, he is very happy about. And even adding the can, you know, for a long time I felt the same way. Adding wet food, giving them wet food, they're they're spoiled, you know, they're not gonna want to go back to the dry food when they got the good stuff. Um, so my dogs get it as a treat, usually once a week. Um, they split yeah. a can three ways, mix it into their dry food, and they're in heaven. It's like the best meal, you know, besides the hamburger that they probably are going to get later on in that week. Well, um, and cans are not what they used to be. You know, no. a can of dog food today is, you know, $2.99, $3.99. So for a lot of people, canned food is not a sustainable a form of feeding a dog every day like it used to be even with our buy five get one free sometimes that's a very prohibitive uh financial way of feeding a dog so you know used to be that you could buy a can of dog food for a dollar that's just not the way it is anymore even at the dollar store right yeah so we really want to make sure that any way that you're feeding your dog um is sustainable because a lot of times if you if you can't sustain it and you have to switch then what does that do it messes up the poop. Yeah. Yeah. It sure does. And poop is not all, it's not fun. It's not like, you know, it's not the funny little emoji on our phones. It's exactly <laughs> not fun at all. Well, yes. Trace, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me and all our Camp Bow Wow family and friends that are going to watch yeah. the video today. So insightful. And I, I really appreciate the connection that you and I have made. And I'll probably be seeing you later today to buy more dog food. Um, yes. Yeah. yes, yes. You know, I do want to tell you one more thing before we go. Yeah. Um, and that is, we have a bag of dog food in our store that a lot of people get confused about. I'm just going to tell you this really quick. And it is this. Yep, I've seen that one. And I just want to clarify what this is. Dogs are not vegetarians. 
and dogs are not vegans, okay? This bag of dog food is a vegetarian bag of dog food, and the reason that we know that they're not vegetarians and vegans is the shape of their teeth, right? Hippos are vegetarians and vegans because they have flat teeth and they eat grass and they eat leaves. Dogs are carnivores, so they eat meat. But a lot of people like to cook for their dogs, and a lot of people have to add special proteins for their dogs and get their meat at the meat market. So what this bag does is this provides the grain and the vegetables and the mineral packet and the fruits and veggies so that if you want to get your meat and cook the meat for your dog, right, then you have the complete balanced grain pack that goes with that. So when you see those kinds of dog foods on the market, that's really how it's designed to be used. And like we have canned food that are single protein canned foods that are designed to be used with those dog foods. So people get really confused when they see vegetarian and vegan foods. Dogs are not, not put on this earth to be vegans or vegetarians. Their teeth are designed to rip and chew flesh. And so I always like to educate people on how to use, because it really does have a great place with people that like to cook for their dogs. But if they just cook the meat or want to just feed raw, their dog's not going to get that balanced diet. And it's hard for people to then have to try to catch up and cook rice, veggies, fruits, minerals, you know, all that other stuff that's needed for the diet. So if you want to cook the organ meat and the bone and all that kind of stuff, then the vegetarian bag has a great place in the diet. So I just want people to understand, because people come in and say, I'm a vegetarian, therefore my dog's a vegetarian. Well, no, he isn't. <laughs> they well, are all like carnivores. They have more. To, yeah. yeah, they have to be protein, so... Yeah, I could not agree more with that. Um, I know my three, if I, I mean, while they will eat tomatoes and lettuce or all the two of them, they would not be happy for very long if that's all I was giving them. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. yeah not, because, no, I'm yeah, not they vegetarian. Were so they definitely would be like, excuse me, lady, you need to share some of what you got going on. Exactly. Yeah. Why are you not giving me part of your hamburger? Yeah, so that's what I just want people to understand when they see those bags, why, you know, why those bags do exist, so. Interesting. I didn't know they existed, so I think that's awesome, um, and even for a short time, we were going back and forth on whether we should be cooking our dog's food or not, and, um, you know, it was so much, it's a, it's, it's a very it's a lot of work, a lot of prep, and um, we ended up trying it out for two weeks, and while they loved it, uh, they also ate a lot more because Honey, I went back and forth whether I should be cooking my kids. <laughs> Listen, if it was up to me, my kids would be eating like chicken, like dry cereal off the floor. So totally, <laughs> I get it. Exactly. Yeah. Before we go, Trace, one more thing. Would you mention your um, free food pantry that you have? Yes. And in fact, we, we, let me tell you the, Every time I question if the community still needs it, we put it out and it's gone. And so it just it just makes me know that the community still needs it. We started it during the pandemic. It's a free food pantry. And it runs, no dog food company donates to it, okay? They just won't. So it runs on our dime. We look at the store and we go, what do we have extra of? And that's what we put out there. And we put it out there because when the pandemic started, we noticed passive, um, passive release of dogs. People couldn't bring themselves to take their dogs to the shelter, but they were just kind of leaving their gates open because they just couldn't afford to feed their dogs anymore. And so we started with a pet pantry to make sure that nobody, no one had to like make that choice. And even if somebody has to come get cat food, Cat food is very high in protein. And we don't want cats to eat dog food. Dogs can eat cat food all day long. And they love it. They love it. It's very high protein. It doesn't have everything you want to feed a dog for life. But dogs act like they've died and gone to heaven when they eat a can of cat they, food. They sure do. Stinky. Yeah. It's stinky and great. And so we usually have some cans stacked out there. Now, today I've got some big bags of dog food that are going out there and it's basically just first come first serve honor system we put it out no questions 
no, we don't patrol it or anything like that. We just have a place that we want someone to come and take some dog food that they need. As we put it out, people take it. And sometimes it's not the best and you may, but sometimes you may see an expensive bag out there and we're having to do it. And sometimes people come make donations. If you have, uh, sometimes we've had people who have had a pet pass away and they just, have a bunch of food and they'll come and put it out there for others and it's just kind of a cool community thing so by all means if somebody needs something and if for some reason there's none out there come in and ask if you are in need no shame come in and ask and we're happy to help i love it i think i love the concept i love that you saw the need for it and you didn't hesitate to make it happen so that pets could stay with their families i mean so it was the right. pandemic was hard on all of us and I, the, that decision that would have to be made, I, very hard. So I think that, you know, you should be commended. It's a wonderful thing that you did and are continuing to do for the community. So thank well, you. Jazz, I think you're wonderful. <laughs> to be here, Bellwell, I can't imagine what you do every day with all those crazy coming to camp. I mean, that, that, I feel like I have Camp Bellwell here with my employees. <laughs> but you don't have actual dogs there it has to be really crazy. I love them all. I love my staff, my pet parents, and the pups. It can be crazy, especially overseeing three of them. But, I mean, You're I... You're doing the great thing for people, you know, for people to have a safe place to take their dogs during the day while they're at work and while they're on vacation. And, uh, I mean, I know... You know, for my own son uh, to be able to have a place to take his dogs while they're on vacation and moving into their house. I mean, what a great blessing that is to have a safe place to trust to send their dogs. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, we're ha we're, we're happy to do it. I mean, I'm, I'm so appreciative to be part of a franchise that has such high standards uh, over pet yeah. care. Um, and, and just continuing to hold every camp to the same standard um, allows us to provide that that care to everyone. Um, and it, it does mean a lot to me and being able to foster and have, I don't know, just everyone come in. I have people that I know outside of camp that get puppies and they bring their dogs to us. And it just, I might not be here every day, but I know their dogs are in good hands and getting feedback from those clients or people, you know, on softball teams or in karate class, like wherever they're coming from, just like saying, my dog is so happy. My dog is so tired. Your team was amazing. It just means the world to me that we're able to provide that service um, to everyone who comes to us. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Yay. wonderful. All right, we'll wrap up one more time. Um, Grace, <laughs> thank, you so, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you thank haven't you already, me. make sure that you like, follow, subscribe our YouTube channel. Um, you can find Trace out at Modern Pet Foods, located at 13225 FM 529, um, Suite 108, Houston, Texas 77041. Um, it's actually really easy to get to. Um, again, I'll probably be out there later today. And if you have any questions and you want to reach out to Modern Pet Foods, give them a call at 832-406-7580. Um, Trace, thank you so much. And Jose's not here, but as he would say, uh, be the person your dog thinks you are. That's, that's how we end our, our calls. So um, thank you so much. Everyone have a good one. Bye. Bye.